Hello and welcome back to Promise Gaming and Civilization V. Brand new, bra bra brand new world. No, it's Brave New World. I can't talk today, but it is Brave New World, Denmark. So, uh, you know what? I got curious and started doing some research onto this city because I'm tired of calling it KP. And uh, long story short, I'm going to continue calling it KP. Uh, I do apologize for those of you who might have been trying to correct me in the comment section. I never know ahead of time. I'm batch recording this, but um, I think it's... Coping? Coping? Something like that? I don't know. It's uh, actually apparently a Norse word for marketplace? Um, but then I guess there's like an excavation site of this city. I don't know. I did. I, it was interesting looking that up, but as far as I'm aware, it's in Norway, not in Denmark. And uh, I, I, I still don't know how to pronounce it because after looking on the internet, I found no help, really. So, anyway, we are at war with the Portuguese once again. And I'm hopeful that I'm going to be able to annihilate these poor suckers. Uh, it looks to me like the crossbowmen left Porto. They're probably heading over here, or they already managed to relocate into Lisbon. If that is the same one, then that's the only crossbowman she has, in which case, sucks to be you, lady. Let's go ahead and get Kabul back on our side. They've declared war on the Portuguese, and we will explore a little bit more. I apparently missed that. All right, next turn. Who's going to take the brunt of the damage? This cannon here, apparently, is going to be taking the brunt of the damage. That's fine. Let's go ahead and send some musketmen down this direction. Um, move and set up. I want to move these guys into position to do a little bit of damage to Lisbon. You can pillage the tile because that costs me nothing as a Danish person to do so. And start bombarding the crud out of the city. You, I would say, could possibly... Oh, I don't want these musketmen going the long way around. I would say set up on the hill, but uh, Porto will just bombard the crud out of it. And there'll be nothing really useful to me doing that. Let's go ahead and send these Danish guys over here. Lisbon will not be difficult to kill, especially with the ability to pillage without sacrificing any movement points. You know, I actually was thinking that Denmark was kind of a civilization I might never really use, because that's kind of a... It seems like a situational ability. But in reality, uh, the ability to pillage and still move around at full capacity gives you the ability to really relocate in an offensive war pretty effectively. I'm going to warn Bismarck. They're friendly to me for... I don't know why, but let's go ahead and share some intrigue about the Persians. I don't really care if the Persians know that I uh, am, am sharing this information. Attila has surpassed me in score. Very rare thing to see that, to be honest. Attila... Usually, I mean, they have a lot of cities usually, but aside from that, no one really cares about them. Let's get the windmills. These are fantastic production buildings. Extra 10% wind constructing buildings, plus you get two more production and engineer slots, which is never a bad thing. I'm going to go ahead and set up the cannon and just sit tight in case uh, crossbowmen decides to just pop over the, over, the, over the hillside like a bunch of meerkats that I was not expecting, and um, I'll bombard the ever-living credit of them. Say hello to that meerkat! Pow! Your head's gone. You mad, bro? You should be, because you're dead. Pew, pew, pew. I'm going to have to move you back and pillage. And maybe Lisbon will continue to bombard. I don't know, but uh, we'll go ahead and do shock and medic and move down. These guys are just going to sit tight. And if Lisbon is smart, they'll start attacking my musketmen, because those are the infantry that can actually conquer the city. But... Something tells me they're probably not going to. This musketman, can you... You can? Alright, you can already pop over to that city. So let's actually sit tight. Let's move the Gallius in and take a shot at Porto. We'll start pressuring them from that side as well. I do believe that was the same crossbowman. So they are completely out of defenses. Which means this is going to be a very easy conquer indeed. Florence has already succumbed to Venice. Venice is doing really well. They've actually gotten at least four cities. So, they're doing pretty well, all things considered. Because there's... Yeah, there's there's Florence, Laventa, and Geneva, and Venice. So, they're really working hard to uh, conquer these cities, or use their great merchants effectively to uh, put the hurt on them and make sure that they join forces. So, working well for them. Don't know if it's working as well for me, but it is working well for them. Let's take Lisbon and create a puppet. Portugal has lost their capital, which is... Excellent. And then I can also conquer Porto. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and start moving my musketmen off in that direction anyway. Let's also move this cannon. Um, I did pick up a holy site, interestingly enough. Not that I have a lot of use for it, but it's still cool to get those things once in a while. Funchal? 
I mean, I could get you just to remove Portugal from the game, but really, why bother at this point? They'll, they can hate me as long as they want. As long as I have their capital, I'm in a pretty solid position. So, I don't think there's any reason to eliminate Portugal from the game necessarily. Just want all their good stuff. I did appear to get the hang... Oops. I want to view the city. I got the Hagia Sophia and the Hanging Gardens, apparently, which is nice. Also, there's a pagoda, which is good. Gives me a little bit of happiness. Makes me happy. Uh, Caravel. Just continue sending you along. Um, I guess I'll let you be stronger against land units. Let's get this cannon firing on you and move you up as well. Both of these cannons in position to start beating the crud out of these gosh darn Portuguese. There we go. Okay. I have joked before that because I am part Dutch, I have a thing against the Portuguese. It's not strictly true, but you want to offer me horses. No, but I will take copper in exchange for some of my excess sugar that I have taken from the conquered Portuguese. I did get an artist and an engineer, which is a great thing to have. I'm going to set you uh, on hold for now, because if I can rush the porcelain tower, that would be a fantastic advantage for me. Will that happen? Probs not, but we're going to see. Um... These musket men actually aren't going to serve me a lot of purpose, so I'm just going to go home and just do some defense. Now, I have nowhere, apparently, to put a slot of art, so I'm just going to let you sleep tight. And set these guys to stay on hold pattern. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, do I have... No, I do not have architecture. The porcelain tower would be a great thing to have. You get great scientist points in addition to a free great scientist, which basically means a free uh, technology as well and more from research agreements. That said, though, I'm also not getting much in the way of research agreements. Maybe I want to get Big Ben instead. Extra merchant points, extra gold, and reduces purchasing cost, which is not bad. Alternatively, the Brandenburg Gate is also quite good. Great general for free. If I want to go for a strictly military victory, that's nice. Primarily, the great scientist points, the culture, and the plus 15% XP for all units built in the city is nice. It's like a, it's like a barracks. It's not amazing, though. I could easily do without it. The Red Fort is okay, makes all defenses better. Good for turtling down. Sistine Chapel? Um, very good for some culture, I guess. 25% culture in all cities? I mean, that's not bad at all. Sistine Chapel is a great wonder to have. Very good, actually. Solid. I might want that. I might actually get the Sistine Chapel if I can. Wouldn't be terrible, but we'll see. We'll see. It's very likely that the uh, AI is going for it. No. No. No peace treaty for you. They killed my Gallius. I'm shocked that Porto... Oh, it's because you got a crossbowman. I was going to say, I'm shocked that Porto had the ability to do enough damage to, to uh, kill it, but it's because they spawned an extra unit that could hit it. All right, Porto, create puppet. Now we can do a peace treaty. Negotiate peace. Yes. You will make peace, and you will give me your marble. Puppety days. What? You don't? Okay, fine. You will give me your 28 gold. No? Oh, shut up. Come with these you too. Um, okay. Apparently, apparently there is nothing she will give me. And you know what? I mean, I guess fair enough. You don't really have much to give me. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal. Acoustics for free. Oh, cool. Okay. I guess I could just rush the Sistine Chapel literally right now and save myself 12 turns. Let's do it. That'll also give me a slot for the artwork that my uh, great artist will provide, which is a nice thing to have. So we're at peace now, and we've managed to conquer pretty much everything that was Portuguese up here. So now we actually have seven cities to work with by 1470 AD. It's a good position to be in. Uh, I actually just missed that intrigue, what Enrico Dondolo was planning on doing. I'm hoping it means he's planning on killing Maria and going ahead and removing her from the game. I'm not opposed to that. But yeah, okay, so now we're up to a thousand score. Again, the score means nothing. I cannot stress enough that the score is a pointless statistic in this game, but it does give you kind of an overview of uh, where you stand. If, if you're like 600 points behind people, it probably means you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, so musketmen can just heal up, cannons sit tight. I may decide to declare war on Enrico Dondolo at some point soon. I could get additional... Ooh. I could get um, additional science from secularism. But I don't think I'm making a lot of use of specialists right now, am I? There's two there. I have unemployed citizens. Why? Why do I have unemployed citizens? 
no. No, no, no. Go ahead and do the default focus for now, then. Uh, I would say production focused. And you can do that because unemployed citizens do provide production for reasons I don't understand, because it literally means they have no job. So how they provide production, I don't know. But I want to get rid of the unemployed citizens and start making use of specialists again, because those are actually very helpful to me. View City, no specialists there. KP has some as well. I could manually work some of these tiles, and that isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, but as it is, for example, you can see my culture has just skyrocketed because I'm actually making use of some of these things. So, yeah, we'll leave it as that for now. Um, so do I want specialists and go straight into sovereignty for extra gold, or do I want free thought? Free thought is great, is the thing. I could go for humanism, but that's worthless to me. It really would be an investment into free thought, which gives me a lot of science from trading posts, of which I have several, as well as, uh some additional science from universities, which is great. Secularism, I think, will be better, though. I currently have 158 science, get secularism, and that bumps up to 199. So that's an extra 30 science per turn. That's not bad. Not bad at all. So let's get a harbor in Copenhagen. Porto, capital. So basically all of my stuff is already interconnected, which is good. That makes things a little easier for me. We'll just space bar out of that. Okay. Okay, we're in a good position. I really could take Geneva, or I suppose I suppose I should say I'm going to liberate Geneva. Oops, I don't want open borders. There. What do you mean that's not a fair deal? You want three gold per turn? No open... How about this? Four gold per turn plus sugar, and there we go. I'm all right trading out four gold per turn in exchange for four happiness. That gives me some leeway. I'm hoping to annex some cities pretty soon, and uh, this way I won't have any nasty revolts on my hands. Although, again, my happiness is doing shockingly well. I have a very good variety of luxury resources, surprisingly. Okay. Uh, I could... Hmm. I have the ability to purchase some stuff, and I could purchase things. What would I like to purchase? For example, a cathedral. Happiness, culture, and art slots. Very useful, so let's do it. And you know what? Let's also make sure I get my great work in place. The scene from the Mexican Expedition in 1838. Uh, how, 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 is that, how is that a Mexican Expedition if you've got a French flag? How does that work? I'm not, I'm not familiar with this particular piece of art at all. So, not that I'm extremely well versed in art as a sort of a general thing, but nonetheless, what the heck is this? Alright, Banks are probably a good thing right now. Let's get my financial infrastructure in position before we continue. I uh, would definitely enjoy having that. Geneva, 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 Geneva. Would my, my, not mind taking you, either conquering you or liberating you into a city-state once again. Venice doesn't have a lot. And by not a lot, I mean they have a lot of things, but... Mm, I don't think there's much they can do. This is the great downside to Venice, is um, they really can only do so much in terms of, like, mustering an army, because they only have one city that they can control production and start popping out their units. So while city-states could gift them units, um, they can't actually build them anywhere but Venice, and that severely bottlenecks their production capabilities. Do we have coal? It appears we do, thank God. Ooh, excuse me. I am really glad that I grabbed Porto and Lisbon, because they are my sources of coal. That is a fantastic situation to be in. Let's send this Danish worker down to the coal. Oh wait, there's already a mine in place. Never mind. So now I have coal. I have three... Oh, I have ten coal. Whoa, what I can do with that. Let's build factories. All the factories, give them all to me. Many factories. Once I have factories, I can look toward uh, taking an ideology. Great writer has been born. Always a nice thing to see. But there is the Fairy Queen. Be found, if so. Huh. The Fairy Queen. Okay. Oh, wait. That's a city-state I want to meet. I will do a U-turn and head over there in a little bit. Yeah, we're in actually a really commanding position right now. Now, as far... What was that? What is this? You see? You see what I'm... Oh, there we go. It's gone. Oh, it's, oh, it's back. It's gone. It's back. It's gone. It's back. It's gone. It's back. It's gone. Some sort of graphical bug going on there. All right, Tyre has been found. How how nice. Nice for me. 
Uh, okay, go over here and build a trading post. Those will all be effectively worth science to me later. Let's also start buying up some cargo ships. Next turn, I'll use that. Now that we have a lot of city-states we can travel with, we also have the East India Company and a harbor, it uh, actually would be useful to me to start trading with some of these city-states. So, Or at least the other players, if nothing else. I could, for example, start trading with Portugal for reasons I don't understand and get 13 gold per turn. Alternatively, I can trade with Kabul and get 15. My ally, I could trade with Quebec City or Colombo. Um, Colombo's not bad. It's close by, which means it's easier to protect the route, is the only reason I'm thinking about doing that instead of Quebec. Quebec is pretty far out. Let's do Colombo. And start getting that up there. Alright, ban luxury cotton. Who wants to ban my luxuries? I don't understand. Okay. Uh, the Globe Theater is finished. Okay. Well, William Shakespeare should be happy with that turn of events. Continue to explore the coast. We got players here? I'm assuming, yes, this is Persian. I was going to say, somebody had better have claimed that gold, otherwise I'm going to grab it. There is still a ruin down here, and I'm tempted to just build a scout and send it down there and grab it real quick, because you never know what that's going to turn out to be. There's also uh, some marble over here, which I don't currently have. There could be a there could be an advantage to actually settling a colony city down here. I don't know. Haven't really decided how that's going to work. There's also more cocoa. See, that's the wonderful thing. This entire strip of continent, because Venice cannot found any cities, uh, there's a whole bunch of unclaimed territory that, if I so desired, I could make use of. Not sure I desire that though, because founding cities, especially in the late game, is troublesome for me. It really, it really hurts my strategy to do something like that. So. Zoroastrianism has been spread, huh? Is someone spreading a great profit? Architecture is done. Wow, it's a lot of ships for the Huns. Uh, do we want to trade with Venice? Get a little extra science per turn? Eh. Eh. I guess I could, or I could just continue trading with my ally, because why not? Um, instead, let's grab scientific theory. Industrial era, peace treaty has expired, I could destroy them for fun. We cannot steal anything left from Venice because we have eclipsed them. There are also no texts to steal in um, in uh, the Persian area. Perseopolis, whatever it was called, I don't freaking know. Let's start uh, swaying Colombo with our spy. I wouldn't mind using my spies to get some diplomatic power. Oh, there's also coal up here at, uh, at Aarhus. How wonderful is that? I could actually sell some of that if I want, and that's worth a pretty penny to just about anybody in the game. So, I could definitely do that. We'll see. Let's see. Do I want another factory? That's going to take a long time to build. It, it's only going to cost 1050 So I would rather start working on something else. Say a musician's guild, maybe. Or a zoo for the happiness, an opera house for the culture, a bank for the money. Makes more sense. We'll get a bank going, and once I... Next turn, basically, I'll buy a factory here instead. And that'll be helpful to me. The Taj Mahal has been built. Once again, Venice is the place to get. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing more units being transferred around for some reason. We'll get another trading post. I can build something, supposedly. Um, can I? No, 400 faith in order to get cathedrals. I'm actually going to go ahead and set this to purchase cathedrals. Or do I want pagodas in some of these places? What can I get in Aarhus? Oh, I can get a monastery. Do I have wine in Aarhus? I do not. So that's actually not as useful to me as it would have been. Mosques, however, are okay for the faith. Eh, yeah, I don't know. Monasteries are great in some cities. Uh, Copenhagen could probably use it because the wine is good, but Braga, whoop, I can't do anything there because I haven't annexed you, have I? No. Hmm. Would I rather have a mosque in Aarhus or another cathedral in one of those two cities? I'm not strictly sure. Sovereignty for the extra gold is nice, but um, entrepreneurship is not bad either. Mercantilism. Commerce and rationalism really work well together as far as money and science are concerned. Like, they, that's a powerhouse thing. I'm going to grab humanism now, and next time I'll get free thought, because my science will start to explode at that point. Let's go ahead and set our production, and then we will call it here. 
Do I want the porcelain tower? I do want it. The scientist points are nice. Um, in addition, basically getting a free technology is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Which is a phrase I say entirely too often. Hmm. Is there anything I would want to rush toward if I could do that, though? I guess rifling for the Norwegian Ski Infantry. That actually could be useful. A very good mid-game unit at this point, which would, uh... Allow me to revamp my war efforts pretty effectively. Alternatively, heading toward dynamite wouldn't be bad. I don't know. Or would I rather work on some of the basics? For example, one turn for a bank? No-brainer. Let's do it. Host. Enrico's going to win unless I give my votes to Persia. Does Persia like me at all? No, they're neutral. So is Enrico Dondolo. Just because I don't want uh, Venice to get more powerful because with seven votes they actually could become... Well, basically, once they become the host, they're going to get an extra two votes. So if I let Enrico become the host, he will basically be very difficult to unseat. Whereas if I give the votes to Darius, then next time the, the election comes around, if I choose to give my vote somewhere else, he actually is going to be quite weak. So let's vote for Persia. I feel like that's actually a fairly sneaky maneuver. And we're going to call this episode here. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Bravis with Civilization Brave New World playing as Denmark. We have seven cities. I think we're in a great position. And maybe we want to start wiping some more people off the map. I haven't really decided yet. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next time.